Hello everyone, my name is Josh Richards and I am the Marketing Director for Merit Solutions. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us today for 30 minutes for a webinar from Nash Simeonovich, the Vice President of Services and our General Ma Manager at Merit Solutions for our mobile and cloud practice. Uh, today Nash is going to be talking about a practical approach to empowering your mobile workforce. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end of this meeting. Uh, so if you have any questions that pop up throughout the presentation, feel free to use the question and answer section and go to webinar and I will monitor those and we can ask them at the end of the presentation. So Nash, let's go ahead and start. Off to you. Thank you, Josh. Hello, everyone. I'm presenting here from our headquarters in, in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, and with offices in New York, California, and Europe. Merit, Merit Solutions has been helping more than 400 clients worldwide to improve their business processes and implement supporting or what I call cool technologies to, to support those, those initiatives. Today we'll share some best practices and some tips for those of you looking to embark on the mobile applications journey within your organizations. To start, I'll want to share just a quick story as I came across one of the older projects that I worked on many years ago, tends to be exact. Uh, the requirements document was for an entity in the UK, and we'll actually be able to, to take a quick peek at it. So here it is. And as you can see, even back then, mobile was part of the, of the offering. 2004, 2005, those requirements were written in the Word document, and some of them, believe it or not, are still very applicable to what companies need today. Requirements were written in Word. We then started doing the work, and the project went on, went on. So here we are, many years and billions of devices later. The need is there, and the companies still are looking to improve by adding revenue, cutting costs, improving efficiency. But now, expectations are a bit different. Everybody wants real-time updates, shorter release cycles. And actually, right now, the quality has to be higher in order for a particular application to survive. So in my current role, I'm both a customer and a vendor. I manage five different teams working on two different continents, and I have to utilize mobile technologies to get my work done. On the other side, I am working very often with our clients, helping them to choose the appropriate mobile and cloud strategy and to make sure that our projects go well and create value for, for the ones we're, we're collaborating with. And to show you what today my world looks like compared to 10 years ago, I just want to quickly show you one of the systems that we're using. So we're looking at the Team Foundation server that helps me see what our teams are working on. And here we're looking at one of them, which is the integration team. And I can see many of the factors that I'm interested in on a weekly basis right here on this dashboard. Now, whenever I need to look deep, get into a project, see what exactly is happening in there, I can go straight into more detailed view and see the backlog, who's working on what, even the details of what for example, in this instance, what a task or a test, what, what test steps we need to take and what the acceptance criteria is. The difference is huge to me. I can feel that our collaboration internally and externally is way better and that we can do any project with higher quality and faster because of the tools and processes that we're using. So that was just a, to share a little bit about me and, and what my work day looks like today versus 10 years ago. And the first tip for today would be, let's make sure we use appropriate tools. Word and Excel are great, but not for everything. Let's jump into and talk about mobility. You can see many staggering numbers here. Hype is all around. Many vendors, crazy growth. If we pick any of these, we'll be, I'm, I'm sure we'll be thinking like, oh my God, 1.4 billion smartphones, and that number keeps going up. One that I personally wanted to really test 
is number of times I look at my phone. And I did not want to admit, but I do look over 100 times every day. And I do that to check, obviously, my email, Yammer, text, different IMs, Twitter. It's just mind-boggling how much time is spent. In short spans, how much time is spent looking at our mobile devices. So as this need expands, we're probably all noticing that our attention span shortens. And it shortens by a lot. So what do we need to, to, to actually need that? What, what do our um, users need? Well, they want and they need precise information served real time. And mobile is the way to meet that. So how are we going to meet this? We're, well, we want to have some techniques and best practices for gathering and fulfilling the requirements, but also want to make sure that we listen and evolve together with the user community. So switching from mobility and looking into the enterprise mobility space, companies that are utilizing the, the mobile technologies, we see a lot of interest. And at Merit, we focus not only on technology, but even more importantly, we focus on improving customers' revenue, on helping them cut the cost, and improve their processes. As part of that story, in our experience, the mobile plays a significant role with each of these. Many of our clients can identify the gap between business process improvement, when mobile is part of the equation, and when it's not. One easy example even for us here internally, is time and expense. Who likes the timesheets and who likes to fill out those Excel reports? But with mobile, when you can take a snapshot of an expense, it can be even a bit of fun. And the adoption rates are way higher. The other one that um, many companies have started using is Power BI. In case you haven't heard, it's an excellent tool for pulling data from disparate systems together. And What's increasing the adoption or improving the adoption of the tool is the mobile app. The mobile app is available for all the major platforms, easy to install, easy to use, and provides seamless user experience um, on different devices. So tip number two for today would be to choose some of the business apps to show the value and go for the small wins beyond emails and calendars. So the goal for the day session will be to show you some steps to show how mobile is part of the strategy and, and part of the story that today's companies need to be aware of. And also we want to share, continue to share best practices and some of the tips that we've learned over many years working with, with mobile technology. So, Diving into the first and more, more, most important decision is what do we need mobility? Many times the executive would come back from a conference and say, hey, we want to do this. The question is why? And why before what is critical? One example that we've, we see often in professional services is providing status reports. And executives do need those, those um, reports real time and they need access to them on their mobile devices. So that's one example. But now let's look at some of the inhibitors of enterprise mobility. And I want to draw your attention here to what actually we can see and even for those of you that have Windows mobile devices can feel on a daily basis is there are apps that do not work the same for you and your colleague on an iPhone. So when we talk about lack of mobile platform standardization, we see that in enterprises, this is one of the key, one of the key elements, one of the key questions that has to be understood and has to be answered before the decision of do we need this now, do we want to do this now, is answered. The slide deck uh, will be available and uh, I would just recommend for all of us here to
to be able to pull it up and use it in those discussions. So the tip number three for today would be that it's better to give up than to move forward without appropriate support. And if we do that, we'll save ourselves time and we'll be focused on the appropriate initiatives at this, at this juncture. It could be, and we see this also often, that it is that a company wants to move forward with mobile, but now it's not the right time. And we'll share some of the best practices how to determine if now if now is a good time or not. If you are still deciding that hey we want to do this, then let's jump into the steps and see how we can make it all happen. Regardless if we're working with on building a mobile app, deploying an existing one, or we're working on something very different, we want to assess where we are first. And many times clients would just say, no, let's just go and do it. But we coach hard on actually trying to describe how things work today and how they should work in the future. Once we have that conversation going, usually many of the important requests are, are being surfaced. And this applies not just to the processes, but also to people. So if we want to enable a mobile workforce, we need to understand what they're capable of doing today and what will their path and transition look like towards the new towards the new world and the new functionality they will be using. After assessing, the key decisions that we need to address are are we handling tasks or processes? Many times mobile apps are built just to handle a single thing. In other other scenarios, for example, for that very commonly for Salesforce, they need to have access to much more than a single functionality. And they need to be able to pull customer data, to see the opportunities, to see the conversations, to be able to update it, to even pull inventory in some instances. The decision of task versus process is one of the most critical ones. It controls the scope. And here is where the process will have more impact, but tasks are way easier to handle. Once agreed on that, we can move forward and actually look at different technologies that could be utilized when meeting to meet the expectations of, on having an app versus maybe having a mobile page, HTML5, that scales well and that can be presented on a mobile device and on a computer as well. As far as different technologies, there's, there, there's, there are so many different tools out there. And some of them are directed towards a single platform. Some of them can meet the many requirements of all the major platforms, meaning iOS, Android, and Windows. We'll show a few today, or mention a few today, but this is the one where we today advise more than ever to actually consider supporting multiple uh, platforms. Why? Because bringing your own device is a reality today. It is not easy to expect users to have multiple mobile devices and actually to use them back and forth for many of their needs that they have during their work day. The third aspect of the steps that we're taking along the way is the actual execution and how with mobile devices we can make the rollout successful. We can have, we need to have short iterations and we need to actually be able to show transparent progress along the way. In a previous example, we actually have seen how TFS helps us show the progress that we're making on a daily or even hourly basis. Okay, with transparent progress, we also need continuous feedback. And continuous feedback means that we have early adopters, that we have champions, that we have people that actually will be able to use the app, provide high quality feedback, 
can actually help us meet the quality goals in order for the app to be successful. These steps need to be taken if we want to make sure that the app is completed, that the functionality is implemented, and that also it is well adopted by the user community. Shortcuts are often taken, and we see especially in the third segment with iterations, transparency, and feedback. If we try to push it out too soon without enough quality, we know that the end user community will simply uninstall and will actually uh, try everything possible to avoid using it. As we, talk, as we talk about user community and as we talk about rollout, let's really look at the most common challenges and how to address them how to address them in a timely manner. So I picked a few here that we see most often. Today, how many systems do we each have? Five, 10, 25? For many enterprises, way more than that. And how many logins? Today, it's rare for us to see a single sign-on in an enterprise. It's usually many uh, different, enti many different um, user IDs that users are trying to remember in order to access their systems. So Microsoft and many other vendors are getting better at that. And they are providing tools now that are mature enough that will enable us to use the same account, for example, an Office 365, a back-end ERP system, and then phone system that we use to, to communicate with our, with our clients. So as we look at, as we look beyond the security, we actually see that putting these systems to work together is one of the key challenges. And we see on the left-hand side, during one of the presentations back at one of the conferences in 2014, I took a snapshot of, of um, from a session called Megatrends in Enterprise Mobility, and you can see that middle layer, a lot of question marks, because there could be many different systems on the back end many different technologies on, on the front end. Because of that, that middle layer can be extremely difficult to handle. And on top of that, that's where the customers do not see high value. Customers just want that to work. So how do we address that? Here at Merit, what we are doing, I'm showing you here one example of our architecture. We do have that middle layer that is needed on most of our projects. We're looking here at a connector on the right-hand side that actually has a certain set of functionalities that is applicable for this particular project. The solution is in the cloud. The back-end system is, is on-prem. And our solution helps the plumbing. So we're not starting from scratch. We can quickly get to work on something that the users will see and that they will um, get a value from. One more example about the architecture is in case the, many of our life science customers tend to want to have their solutions on premise, in which instance you're noticing the same connector, very similar functionality, is now enable us to connect to multiple systems on the back end, on the left hand side, and also on the right hand side with many front end applications. Front end meaning tablets, smartphones, different operating systems. So that was the first challenge. Integrations are not easy. Real-time, batch, nightly, many different scenarios. Having something to rely on, not to start from scratch, is critical. If you don't have that, there is a risk that the majority of the budget will be spent on building that what we call the plumbing. Let's move on to the, to the next challenge when we talk about Mobility. It is a client-side development. Today, we can develop in native um, development environments targeting one, one uh, operating system. We can use cross-platform development tool set. We can build an app. We can build HTML5. And that creates a lot of confusion in the marketplace. So before, earlier, 
in our practice, we would go and try to really explain to our clients why a certain tool is the best. But we've realized that actually our experience should not be limited to a single tool. And we need to be able to connect the business requirements and the business needs to what the tools, different tools can offer, and then literally mapped out before choosing the platform. These days, the good news is that many of the platforms are mature enough to actually offer a cross-platform experience that can solve most of the business, business needs. I'll share with you one more example of how we try quickly to visually show to our clients what their requirements could look like. And for one of our, one of our prospects, what we did is, you can see here, this is a wireframe where we're talking about a mobile app that actually has a browsing functionality. We go back and forth, we understand what different screens would look like, and we are finalizing the scope and functionality that will be implemented. This saves us weeks of effort because if we do this well and we, co we collect the requirements, we will be able to find and to use the right tool for the job. The second best part about this is that we're not throwing things away. We actually use this for training of the users as well because they, the user community can provide much better feedback on how does this feel and look than if they have to wait another two weeks, four weeks to actually see anything on the actual mobile device. The third area where we see challenges as far as rollout is the overall quality. We all have seen those famous reviews that talk about, hey, I would never use this again. This did not meet our expectations. Once that's out there, ability to turn it around is, is not as viable or is, is not as easy to accomplish for us as project team that need to convince user community that they should use our solution. So how do we overcome the, the quality chasm here? We try to engage users earlier. We try to find data users. And luckily, most of the platforms give us great opportunity or give us great ability to actually engage users before everybody can see what we've come up with. So let me show you what that looks like here in real life. I'm going to show you one of our apps that we've built here for Merit. It's published on different stores. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here on, on Google Play. We can see a few things about Merit Connect. We can see some screenshots, what Merit does, what's the story behind the app, and even a bit more about the user interface. We can see that many users have shared their opinion about that. And that helps us to pass that experience along and to have more users using the app. Very similarly, we have built an app for one of our conferences that happened a couple of months ago. And here we can see that, first of all, the app is no longer published because we do not need it today. But actually, we still have it out there so our users can see what, it, what did it look like previously before we go with the next iteration for our next for our next event. So we looked at Google Play, we looked at um, Windows Store, we would highly recommend that you publish your app and let certain number of users that it's there to test it before you publish it and promote it um, to a wider audience. One more tip here is that for Apple products, for iOS, there is a a nice tool that allows you to actually send invites to beta users, internal and external, to test your app. It's called Test Flight, and Apple uh, acquired a startup just for this purpose to allow better testing along the way before the user community is fully reached. So with that, we'll get back to our slide deck, and we'll look at one more 
aspect of quality. This is the list of most popular apps on Google Store. Many familiar names. Pick of Facebook. Why? Well, I think we're all addicts to some extent. What I want to point out is how often these apps are being updated. And when we look at the numbers, each number represents the days since the last update. Average is 15. What that tells us, we need to maintain and update the app consistently. Here at Merit, when we roll out ERP system, we do not update ERP as often. We do add some functionalities, but the users are many times stuck with what, what was rolled out in initial rollout. Mobile user community does not accept that. The updates need to be consistent. The updates need to meet the, or to respond to the feedback from the user community. Internally, we have a thing that, that you see at the bottom, and that has been our mantra, where we do not want to have plenty of systems. We want to have a few, but a few critical ones that we're going to use, and we're going to maintain, and we're going to get the most out of. So with that, the quality is the critical element. And I would say the most critical element for the app and for our project to survive. The difference between now and the past is that users do not have tolerance to wait. They need to hear what's going on. We need to show transparently what progress is being made, and we need to address their concerns. So with that, I want to close out with something that's a bit more generic than just mobile. Why before what? in everything that we do that's important, business processes, mobile, whatever, we need to understand why we're doing it and ideally have that in writing. It will create a great support. And for some of our statements of work, we have clients have multiple people sign off on it. It shows the commitment and it's a great entry to a successful project. The next one is who and by when. You saw the TFS. Today, there's no luxury for having a month to actually create a document. We need to understand what progress is being made on a daily basis and do it iteratively so we can potentially review that requirements document within that month time frame and make it better. And last and most important, we want those wins. And we want first set of users to be excited and to tell a great story about work that we did and that we could be doing in the future for them and for, for others that have a similar need. Um, as we close, I'll just share that this is a quote from one of our, from one of our uh, larger clients, Stanley Steamer. For those who are in the space, probably, probably know them. It is the sixth largest private fleet in the country. And we're proud to say that we've been helping them deploy a mobile solution that will be used across all major platforms. And together with the back-end system where full integration is in place, and they're able to make their processes better and ready for tomorrow. As we close, here are my contact information. I would love to hear back from you. Twitter, questions, it's all welcome. And now maybe we can go back to Josh and see if we have any questions. Great. Thanks, Nanad. I really appreciate your time and, and sharing this valuable information with us. We do have a couple questions in the queue. Um, I will go ahead and take the liberty of uh, rewording some of these a little bit just to, to get them more concise. Uh, so the first question we have is, what technology platform do you use to do your, uh, your mobile development? So today, well, we can do the work by using some of the platform specific tools. We prefer to use Xamarin as one of the more mature tools when we talk about cross-platform development. For those of you that are not familiar with Xamarin, it's a tool set where we're using C Sharp and Microsoft development tool set to develop um, cross-platform applications, not mobile pages, but actual apps that are being downloaded and installed on their devices. In the examples that I shared today, most of them were using Xamarin as the tool has been the tool has been around for, for a while 
And today, it's capable of handling most of the requests that our clients have. A lighter tool set that, you, that we use to produce mobile pages, when we talk about HTML5 compatibility across different devices through a web browser, uh, we use something called Cordova, or um, it used to be called PhoneGap. Also, it's been around for a while. It does do a good job for creating those HTML5 compatible pages, but it does not offer the full breadth of and depth of functionality that Xamarin could. Okay, thanks, Nana. The next question that we have uh, relates to uh, outside systems, so outside of, of mo the mobility system. What ERP or other uh, systems can you integrate into your uh, mobility projects? Flexibility today is the key. And while we here at Merit implement different ERP systems, different CRM solutions, our goal and intent is that we are able to integrate with any backend system. As long as the, the system on that side has a set of APIs, web services, integration points to expose and consume data. When we talk about that middle component, we've seen Peachtree, QuickBooks, Dynamics AX, Oracle, SAP, Salesforce, Dynamics CRM, you name it, we probably have seen or come across those systems. The good news is each of them does have those integration points. So if somebody has any package uh, that they bought off the shelf at, or and implemented, most likely the package will offer that functionality. So that is a good news here that the hooks exist and the middle component should be able to consume that in a fairly straightforward manner. Okay, great. And the last question that I have up until this point is, uh, what do you think the biggest challenge is when rolling out mobile initiatives? I think people uh, believe it's uh, too easy and can be done in a matter of days, regardless of the complexity. That's where we recommend rolling out something that's off the shelf, like for iPhones, I don't know if, if many of you know, there is Outlook app. An Outlook app compared to um, the app that comes with iPhone is actually better if you need to convert often mails to schedules and ignore some conversations and do a bit more with it. So rolling out something like that is, is quicker, but it still has its own set of challenges for companies to support it and make sure they get most out of it. When we need to work on a custom app, it is, it is a big challenge for companies to understand that the development life cycle still needs to happen. And many times, the developers still need to write some code to make sure it all comes together nicely. The best practice there is to make sure we deliver value in small increments. So if we have a project that sometimes, for Stanley Schema, for example, we've been working on it for the last 18 months, but every month there is a new functionality that's being added, and that's where the client, that's why the client is pleased with the value they're getting every single iteration. Without that, we're risking of having a, what we sometimes call big bang approach where it's all or nothing. That carries way higher risk. And if we can go with iterations, shorter ones, that today is well received and that is the best practice that we're utilizing across most of our mobile projects. Okay, great. Well, that was the last uh, question that I have. There's nothing else in the queue. So at this time, I would like to uh, thank you and thank everyone for your time and joining us today. And feel free to reach out to Merit Solutions if you have any other questions on enterprise mobility. Thanks and have a great day, everyone. Bye.